This used to be the Las Vegas Bay. When I was superintendent here from 1987 to 2000, uh, the lake was not at full pool, but maybe 93% of full pool. This is, or was, Lake Mead. The reservoir created around 30 miles outside of Las Vegas when the Hoover Dam was built, damming the Colorado River in 1928. Today, Lake Mead has become a symbol for one of the worst droughts America has ever seen. In the next three to four years, 25 million Americans downstream of the Hoover Dam could lose access to the Colorado River. This was uh, the last section of boat launching ramp before they had to close the marina. When's this gonna stop? What are we experiencing here? What do we call this? You used to be able to step right off here, a few feet down, and be able to bank fish or swim or enjoy. So that water is really about 170 feet from where it was when the lake was full. As a former manager and someone dedicated to the public's enjoyment of this area, it breaks my heart. Experts across the board, from scientists to water commissioners to government officials, are brainstorming possible solutions to this drought. But one city in particular is leading the way, and the rest of the West may follow suit. Whether it's too late or not remains to be seen. Water flows through everything. It's part of our history, our economy, our culture. It's very relevant to how we live, and in particular, how we live in community. Water scarcity affects all living things, and the American West is in a particularly tough place. If we want to understand how dire the situation really is, we have to go to the source. Talking about the Colorado River, it's like you know, asking why the, the universe is important to us. It, it, it gives us all life uh, throughout the desert southwest. It's providing water supply for 40 million people. It's irrigating more than 5 million acres of farm and ranch land. It is actual water rights for 30 Native American tribes, but there is quite a history of litigation on this river system because it flows through such an arid region. In order to understand who gets the water and how much, you have to go back over a century. The Colorado River is managed under the terms of the 1922 Colorado River Compact, an interstate agreement entered into by the seven states that share the river, where the river actually flows through. And there were problems from the start. When the Colorado was initially divvied up, we were going through an historically wet period. So the people that divvied up the river at the time uh, apportioned way more water uh, to all the states than we now know to be available. After the compact signing, the river returned to its normal flows. So more water existed on paper than in the river creating a gap between supply and demand that continues a century later. On top of all that, there's a seniority system on who gets the water. The first person who puts water to use gets the senior right, and the next person who puts water to use gets a right junior to that. And if there's not enough water to go around, then only the senior water user gets their water service. Agricultural users were the first ones to start using the water in the early 1900s. So largely agricultural interests have the senior water rights on the Colorado River. About 80% of the water is used by agriculture and about 20% is used by municipal and industrial users. 
And when it comes to how much water each state gets, it's anything but equal. In the lower basin, Nevada gets uh, 300,000 acre feet, Arizona gets 2.8 million acre feet, California gets 4.4 million acre feet, and then Mexico gets 1.5 million acre feet. And then in the upper basin states, it is based on percentages. So Colorado gets 51%, Utah gets 23%, Wyoming gets 14%, and New Mexico gets uh, 11%, give or take a little bit. In most places, the first water users to lose their supply will be municipal populations, like for water for households. Las Vegas's allocation is small. Nevada gets just 2% of the Colorado River allocated to it. But its dependence on that allocation is huge. For Las Vegas, Lake Mead provides 90% of the water to 76% of the state's population. In 1922, a 2% allocation may have made sense, but not today. Since then, Las Vegas grew from thousands of residents to millions. Since 2002, we've added almost 800,000 uh, new residents to the area. That means Las Vegas has to get very creative with water conservation. For starters, they recycle 100% of indoor water. You could literally leave every shower, every faucet, in every hotel room on the Las Vegas Strip running 24-7, 365, and we wouldn't deplete any more water from Lake Mead. But outdoor water use is another question. Las Vegas has the water cops to thank for their conservation achievements here. Water Race Investigator 8776. Today is Friday at 6.30 a.m. Spray flow is occurring at this property along the HOA turf. Water is running off the property and heading down the street. As a water waste investigator, my job is to go around the city of Las Vegas and to search and document any water waste violations that I come across. So broken sprinklers, irrigation system leaks, anything like that. Um, you can kind of see all this water running off, heading down into the street, all this overspray. You know, this is considered non-functional turf, so the only purpose of this turf is for aesthetic reasons. Water Race Investigator 8776. There appear to be multiple broken drip emitters in the front yard of this property. I have placed a flag at the location of the broken emitters, and this concludes the investigation. This property doesn't have any uh, previous history of this particular violation, so this is just gonna be considered a uh, formal warning. So I'm just writing up a door hanger right now just to leave on the property to let the homeowner know of what's going on. We've reduced our use of Colorado River water by 26% and taken down our per capita usage by about 50%. Water cops are just one of many actions Las Vegas takes to conserve water. Here's another. With Water Smart Landscape, we pay people $3 a square foot to remove turf. We take that grass out, replace it with desert-friendly landscaping. We're saving 10 billion gallons of water a year, and we're taking it further. By 2025, all non-functional turf will be removed in the greater Las Vegas metropolitan area. And the idea is spreading. The, the non-functional turf statute that was only signed by the, the governor of Nevada in June of 2021, and we're already seeing that adopted in Governor Newsom's order in California. However, no amount of conservation can prevent how Las Vegas loses billions of gallons of water a year. Hoover Dam is both a blessing and a curse for Las Vegas. While it was built to store water for Nevada residents, it also loses massive amounts every year. Something that we really need to be talking about more in the year 2022 is evaporative losses. 
at Lake Mead every year, you lose about 600,000 acre feet of water every year just from evaporative losses. And if the water level keeps lowering, it could be disastrous. For folks downstream of Hoover Dam, if the lake declines to elevation 895, that's called Deadpool. And that's the point at which physically water can no longer pass through Hoover Dam to water users downstream. That is the sort of day zero crisis that is inconceivable and yet is staring us in the face. We have an incredibly grave and dangerous situation unfolding on the Colorado River, yet we don't have certainty over which state needs to bear the brunt of the water shortage. Ultimately, questions need to be asked about what the American dream actually looks like. Is it really a white picket fence over a luscious green lawn in the middle of a desert? The question really is, who's American dream? The lawns are a concept that was imported from England where there was a cooler, wetter climate. The way I have come to understand the American dream is that we are a culture that likes to do better through innovation. And we have an opportunity to use our best thinking to try to adapt. This should be a moment that mobilizes us all and, and, and brings us together where we figure out how to do it differently, especially in the climate in which we live. Thank you.